I think uh, like David Mayer ha- had to kind of come back and directly uh, comment on things because his like spawn is really fucking it up. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Nicola is now stuck with being a priest because he was outed uh, as a Satanist. Sutter was outed as an FBI informant. Chloe yeah. is just Chloe's just being Chloe. Chloe's Chloe. Incoherent gibberish on the, yes. the, the, the on the official <laughs> website. So. Yeah, I think. I he, mean, Matt's getting up there in years, and this is his legacy, right? It is. Know, he's gonna <laughs> fuck it up for dad so bad yeah. that, like, he's mm. ashamed of his children. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the Empire Never Ended uh, Satanic News Service here. <laughs> I'm Fritz, We're joined by Boris and Ray. Hello. Uh, Hi. The, the usual crew, and uh, we, got some, we got some more news for you. We're taking a, a long break from Arc 3 here uh, to update you on some goings-ons in the extended Tenepod universe. <laughs> um, the, the, the <laughs> yeah, the, the really deep-cut lore. <laughs> And all that. So, yeah, we've got some more news for you. We, we gave you Temple of Blood last time, uh, last week, updated you on the FBI connection and uh, the response of the, of the Nazi community <laughs> to such revelations. And you know what? We got a response from the Nazi community <laughs> about such revelation. How about that? D- Davy, huh? Davy, Davy, Davy had something to say. Well, you know. Well, we, Davy Myatt. We can't, you know, definitively... <laughs> Prove that we don't have pro- we don't have probative evidence. We don't have probative evidence. Show me the probative <laughs> evidence. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, we got a we got a message, a little critique. Um, mm. uh, a but- listener, a fan of ours, wrote this. Your claims about Sutter and the Order of Nine Angles reveal your lack of knowledge. The O9A has no leaders or officials or representatives or official nexians or publications or sites. It's an occult philosophy or subculture, if you like, and not a group. So, again, no idea who that could have been. Doesn't sound like anybody we know. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's an account strictly dedicated to engaging people about O nine A things in a very right. David Myatt way. Uh, so he goes on to to talk to somebody else and goes, you know, somebody's talking about some neo Nazi who like killed a person or you know whatever you know, the the typical things that we will actually talk about in this episode as well. The guy, like lots of other people around the world, had some Order of Nine Angles literature, which does not mean he supported the O9A. What literature? We're never told. (laughs) Just like some other criminal trials, the O9A (laughs) is a scapegoat, boogeyman. And it's like, well, which is it, though? Like, uh... (laughs) It's either, yeah, okay, like, it's an amorphous thing, right? There is, you know, no O9A. Anybody can be O9A. And then somebody does some stupid-ass shit in the name of the O9A. And it's, it's like, well, he only had one book. Prove to me that he was a member. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't even have members. There are no members. There's no groups. Uh, yeah, amazing. Amazing that a group called the Order of Nine Angles would say that they're not an organization. They're not some kind of a group. Yeah, read uh, his tweet from August 30th. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. That one's uh, a winner, I would say. I'd be interested to know if anyone here or anywhere has actual evidence, something mm. probative, mm. admissible in a court of law, that David Myatt founded or was actively involved with the Order of Nine Angles. All I've heard read is hearsay in people committing fallacies. <laughs> I love that this guy that calls himself like, like the most radical Satanist <laughs> Nazi. Well, not mm. Nazi, whatever. He calls himself an anarchist at times in different times in his life. Like, I love that this guy, this supposed radical Satanist, is always referring to courts of law as the ultimate judge of truth in this. Like, show, yeah, amazing. Amazing guy. Probative, huh? Yeah, probative. probative. Yeah, I mean, mm. this is his new favorite word. She uses over and over. Yes. <laughs> and um, so 
this person on Twitter who like completely mysterious who it is also references Myatt's new book in quotation marks, which is something he just I guess somehow made in, yeah um which is was made in response to the like the Sutter gate stuff as someone called it um and it's uh, very funny because like he links to the book and you like I just came through the book and uh like in thirty seconds I found in the book David Myatt or Anton Long actually mm, okay. uh, writing uh no one has any probative of evidence. So he uses <laughs> the same words that the, the Twitter person uses. Ugh. And um over and over how, again. So it's, how is it possible to want to punch a word in the face? <laughs> <It's> really <laughs> that that is magic. That is yeah. that is satanic magic there. Yeah. I, I mean multiple people that we've talked to over the course of this uh you know, doing this podcast to have experience reading about David Myatt. All know that, you know, all, all said the same thing. Myatt writes in a very particular way. Even mm. when he's, you know, he's always trying to be mysterious and not Myatt, but the way that he writes is so quintessentially Myatt. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that it's just a dead giveaway every single time. Because he, he, he loves posting on different fucking forums and yes. this, that, and the other thing. And, and also, I mean, there are also two very, like, important giveaways. This is, one is he's writing about himself, yes. and the other one he is always writing how there is no evidence that David Myatt is Anton Long. Yes. This is like the theme of his life. Well, and also yeah. saying that everybody else is some you know mundane yeah. ignorance yeah. fool for not understanding that like they're not a group despite having m- yeah. many groups grouped together in groups who co-publish things as groups. Um, yeah, except for all of that. Yeah. Well, that they have like a you know strict kind of um, what's it called? Uh, well, like a, a whole worked out system of ascension through ranks. I mean, what yes, the fuck? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, some fucking poor guy is like f- finishing up his like star game now that he hand cut like whatever the I don't remember how many pieces, uh, fifty two pieces or whatever he had to hand carve, and he reads on Twitter that. The Order of Nine Angles has no membership requirements. <laughs> like, yeah. He's going to be pissed. He's been camping for six months. <laughs> yeah, Man. walking through the woods. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know how hard I, it is to find a quartz tetrahedon in this economy right now? All yes. these Satanists around? Oh, yeah. You know. Can't find one at an affordable price anymore. Well, Dude's you know, the supply not, chains are all member. fucked up now. I guess they're probably sourcing them from, you know, where are they, where are they getting their fucking crystals from? I think the, the, the Nexian <laughs> around Saturn. No, okay. It's uh, shipping well, yeah, costs the supply are chains are definitely really fucked bad. up for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially during COVID. Vindex can't come soon enough, huh? That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, sorry, I was just, I was just thinking back now to some previous Maya shit that I read. Remember when he, uh, that blog is gone now, but do you remember when he wrote that article about us making fun of the Order of Nine Angles? Yes. And the the main basis for his argument was that we had no uh, peer reviewed articles uh, or anything <laughs> in like mainstream media. It's like, dog, you couldn't fucking write for like. You can barely write for your own self-published shit. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Peer-reviewed articles in fucking mainstream media. <laughs> you write, you write shit that like only like the worst kind of neckbeards like Satanists read. Like, get the, get the fuck out of here. Well, and us, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, but again, that's him referencing like fairly mundane authorities to determine the. the you know, the truth status of something, which yeah. again is kind of, I mean, where, what, I didn't read that part of like fucking Hostio where he's like, make sure you get all of your spells referred by, a, by a, an appropriate expert in the ministry of, um, whatever. Yeah. Of, I don't know what ministry they have. Ministry of magic, like in Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, the only time know. he's been published in mainstream media is when when some O nine A person does some fu- some fucking stupid ass shit, and then it's like, yes, oh, David exactly. Myatt. Oh yeah, he's been published a lot. <laughs> Weird Nazi <laughs> Just, troll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who's the man behind this freak now? Ah, uh, it's the <laughs> same guy. All right. Although I guess they like to they like to have that. Um, uh, they were pretending for a while that they had that like Oxford scholar, right? That uh, yeah, yeah. Sp- Part of their whole thing. Well, maybe they could peer review our podcast. They could peer review our <laughs> podcast. Yeah. We could swap notes, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just give us the post office box and we'll send it right away. <laughs> yes, absolutely. On to other news. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there was um, 
some interesting stuff, news coming out of Russia regarding the Onine. Now, we've seen before, uh, I think in our first arc, we mentioned some uh, Onine, alleged Onine activity in Russia. There was a, a church burning and then this series of Satanist murders um, in, I believe it was Yaroslav, uh, that were attributed to some Onine influenced teenagers. But like we'll see, I'm not really sure how much of this is necessarily straight on INA. So let's get into it. Uh, recently, a Moscow court um, charged two people, uh, Andrei Tregubenko and Olga Bolshakova, of committing two murders of um, separate murders of a guy named Platon Stepanov and Viktoria Zaitseva, uh, who were both murdered allegedly in some sort of Onine culling ritual uh, back in 2016. So they were actually only arrested for it now because they had been under surveillance for drug trafficking, um, allegedly, by the uh, probably the FSB or something. They had tapped their phones and then got access to all these chats where they found out more about these murders, right? Uh, so they were arrested officially for drug trafficking and then charged with these murders, which they confessed to and led uh, police to the sites where they buried the bodies. Um, they were mostly in these villages and like outside of these villages in the wilderness in Karelia. Now, <clears throat> when when you read about it in Russian media, they almost always say that these people were members of the Order of Nine Angles. Uh, I don't have necessarily trouble believing that, although I can't really see evidence of it when i started digging around their social media of necessarily like a direct 09a link like 09a guys on social media put 09a symbols everywhere yes um so like it's you know itch they got a scratch yeah i did find her old uh vk you know like russian facebook or whatever um which is like it's all satanist shit um all like dark Satanist shit, whatever. Uh, but no, like septograms, no shit like that. Again, doesn't necessarily mean anything. Uh, so according to Russian news, they had met in an O9A uh, forum on, on Vukontakti, which I wasn't able to find. I think it's been taken down. There's another one though, uh, of like Russian O9A. And damn, there's a lot of Satanists in Russia. These groups are <laughs> fucking huge. It's ridiculous. I was like sifting through all of them. I'm just like, Jesus Christ! What's going well, Russia has their own there? kind of tradition of, I mean, tradition. Yeah, in the they do. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of like Satanist in prisons and stuff like this, right? Yeah, yeah, like mm. in gulags and stuff, and people mm. who like, yeah, reject all morality and like yeah. do the dirty work inside of like labor camps and shit, like mm. Satanists. Uh, no, but this is all like goth Satanism. Uh, they're all really into black metal, not surprisingly. Um, but so Olga had this profile, Olga Varg. Uh, and she did continue on the well-known path and tradition of Onine and generally Satanist people of writing shitty poetry. So she has, oh, yeah. uh, she has her own little poetry site and I'll read <laughs> one of her poems, which is a little, I'll read it a little bit later, but, um, Aww. don't worry. You'll, you'll still get treated to her poetry. Now the other guy, her partner, um, Andre, he, I think, has much more clear kind of Nazi-looking profile, right? So no um, overtly O9A stuff, uh, but definitely the Black Sun. Um, lots of Black Suns, actually. <laughs> Just Just quite a bit of right. that kind of yeah. Nazi, Nazi <laughs> shit. Lots of Satanist shit. His About Me is, uh, uh, the wolf is uh, indifferent about what the sheep think of him or whatever. Uh, so yeah. he's he's one of these guys. Well, the, yeah. So, that, well, that's that's completely compatible with ONA, no? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Sutter actually said exactly that mm. when he was a Aryan Nations preacher. Yeah. He had a whole the whole lecture about it. Sermon. So about the two victims. So they were friends, at least with one of each. So I think that this um, this guy Platon Stepanov, who was killed, was friends with Olga. And Victoria Zaitseva was, I think, um, like really into Andre. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. uh, they were both murdered in a similar way. So they had told their parents that they are going out hiking and camping with their friends from Moscow, uh, and then they were murdered. So they they went 
hiking, mm-hmm. presumably. Mm-hmm. And this is where I'm, I'm wondering whether the 9 a connection is actually real. So were they doing the whole, like, you know, whatever it is, yeah. walk X amount of miles in the woods and whatever, yeah. whatever, uh, to initiate these new guys and then killed them? Um, that isn't clear so much. There hasn't been... Because reading this Russian media, I mean, any anytime you have any kind of Satanist murders, you get a lot of, like, shitty tabloids. So you immediately get all this stuff, oh, they cannibalized them, uh, ah. they did all this shit, which doesn't seem to be really true. They definitely stabbed these guys to death. And there may mm-hmm. or may have... Uh, may not have been another couple involved in at least one of the murders. Uh, another couple was arrested recently um, for allegedly like taking part in these murders, but I don't think they've been, they've been charged yet. Um, again, another like married couple uh, from Moscow. Um, but the Platon guy, he was murdered um, and his parents figured out pretty quickly that something was up. I mean, they were kind of suspicious too when he said he was going like camping and hiking and like didn't bring any camping gear with him and sure. then, you know didn't come home so they immediately mm-hmm. you know um called the cops who were looking for him his vk profile which is kind of eerie to look at uh had his parents i guess log on and put his like wanted you know missing missing persons picture up there and mm-hmm. from what i could tell this guy didn't you know necessarily seem like an O nine a guy or anything like that. He really just seemed like a kind of edgy teenager. Um, mm. Lots of kind of average teenage music tastes and the like, uh, and no like weird Satanist shit. So, I mean, he was definitely just killed by these fucking assholes uh, yeah. that he probably thought were his friends. Mm. Um, now, I don't know. We'll see how this develops along. I'm not necessarily sure that, um, which media to trust in Russia. So if anybody knows anything, because <laughs> what we, what we do know for a fact is that there are quite a bit of 09A people in Russia. Like, you know, we said, mm-hmm. you know, ABG Lodge published uh, Kiss of Mirana or whatever with this Temple of the Black Sun. But yeah. Temple of the Black Sun seems to be a pretty mysterious. Coin Sutter right? I mean, published that book, right? Yes, yes, on Martinet Press. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when, uh, when ABG Lodge edited one edition of Fenrir after Temple of Blood edited one, that one was dedicated to like Eastern European Nexians of yeah. right. uh, the ONA. Yeah, of which there are some, I guess, in Ukraine as well. Mm. Um, so, I mean, yeah, these, these people may very well have been ONA. It's kind of, honestly, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, either way, I mean, they did murder two people, uh, which means that they uh, take that shit a little bit more seriously than some of the other ONA guys that we saw. <laughs> <laughs> that we've seen in other places. I mean, they're straight up murdering people. And, uh, yeah. Uh, they have two kids too, which is kind of mm. fucked up. Um, Oof. But one of the eerie things, so back to her like poetry real quick. Um, so on her poetry page, there are two, it ends pretty abruptly in 2017. Now these murders occurred in 2016, right? And there are two, two poems published after that. One is called, I did translation here in unrestrained rhythms, only hate, rage, and strength, only a whirlwind of insatiable ideas on the shards of a shattered world, the harbinger of crazy ideas, an angry face that cuts through destinies, inspirer of violent wars will abide in my heart forever. Your blazing black fire carved in blood, carved in battle, the eternal image of insane evil and in unrestrained frantic rhythms i will burn everything to ashes by your will that's like a, that's a pretty great death metal song yeah uh but the carved in blood kind of is eerie when you see that this was posted mm-hmm. after they stabbed this yeah. guy to death um yeah in her photos she poses with a knife um and there's some satanist imagery but um what is it? The, uh, the Gola Chab sigil or whatever you can see in kind of the background of, uh, of one of her f- photos, which, uh, which one is that? How the fuck do you describe their sigils are all fucking squiggles. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's the squiggly one. Squiggle, Does it have a, a circle and a like circle a triangle? And a triangle okay, yeah. with another, <laughs> with a circle oh, inside one. of sure, that sure. and then another circle you. within the circle. <laughs> um, yeah. So <laughs> there we have it. I don't know. Uh, there's there's really not much to say about this. Mm-hmm. I, I'm interested to see where the case of these other two that got arrested is going to go. Uh, so this, the article that uh, I read about this came out on August 8th. Um, 
of this year. So they, you know, this is still like a really on, ongoing thing. Um, and these two are Alexandra, uh, Alexandra and, and Tatiana Perevozchikov. Khmur. <laughs> they have a nice. type, really long uh Khmur or something like that. Uh I believe you. Yeah. Uh so we'll, we'll see. I mean if if these guys were their accomplices and this was some sort of um Nexian, I presume we're gonna find out more relatively soon. So we'll definitely keep our mm-hmm. eye out on that. Um I mean but if, if four people has... got arrested and they are in Exian, that's probably the entire Nexian. Oh absolutely. Oh well, Moscow's yeah. a big city, you never know. There's a lot of safety. That's true, there. but I mean <laughs> like four is like double what most of them seem to be, so <laughs> Well, you know. Uh they're a lot more serious. Look at this. Like yeah, fucking true. people. Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. Uh yeah, so this is we'll keep our eye out on that. If anybody if any of our listeners know anything more about Russian 09A, uh I'd we'd really like to know. Uh, about that because well saves us uh saves me having to dig through lots of vk groups of on yeah visits. come on guys we got plenty to do <laughs> really help us out a bit we yeah. got other shit to cover we do have come other on. shit to cover so olga and andre murders for sure oh nine a likely <laughs> yeah it sounds pretty likely yeah yeah uh i don't know is that there's more to say on that no i mean yeah, I think you did a good job, but yeah. I also wasn't sure what's the... I saw the, the Russian media mentions there or, or the Nine Angle connection, but I didn't see much, didn't see much more than that, just to mention. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't see any like concrete, you know, yeah. telltale signs of O9A other than the media repeating it, which, you know, God knows where they got that from. I was like, you know, brushing up on my Russian a little bit with some of these articles, so <laughs> maybe... Uh, between that and Google Translate, maybe I missed something, but I, I don't mm. think so. Uh, mm. I don't see, like, again, I don't see photos that are concretely, like, O9A stuff. Like, I mean, she posted a lot, and she has, like, a lot of photos. Um, and it's kind of more, some of them are pretty creepy, i got to say. Creepy-ass looking woman. Uh, in some pictures. She looks pretty normal in others. But, yeah, I don't see, uh, I don't see all the telltale O9A stuff. Mm. Okay. We'll see, I guess. Well, maybe they are a bit more serious. And they don't post o- ONA stuff on uh, on their yeah, yeah, social I wouldn't, media. I wouldn't. I don't think so because yeah. <laughs> she did have a pretty open social media. I mean, yeah. like like I said, I easily found it. I found her poetry, mm. like her pictures and stuff. You know, granted, it ends you know soon after they murdered some people. Maybe then they figured out that mm. Mm. posting on a. Uh, Social media isn't really a great idea, especially if you murdered your friends that you were friends with on social media. Mm, mm. Uh, might make things a little bit awkward. Uh, but no, she posted a lot. I mean, a lot more than him. He's, his background is a little bit more shaky, too. Like, he seems to be kind of... Um, uh, I read in one article that he had been involved with, like, a motorcycle gang for a little mm-hmm, bit. Mm-hmm. Um kind of worked odd jobs around russia he's a big like tattoo enthusiast he has like head tattoos and shit like that but you know not not really much interesting about him other than that um neighbors say that she was the nice one that you know, played with the children in the in the courtyards uh mm. so and uh andre's sister claims that she's the one that got him into satanism but everybody's family member always says something like that because her family yeah. says that he's the one that influenced her uh, yeah. mm-hmm. to go down she was normal until she met him mm. you know whatever uh but yeah all indications seem that he did most of the actual killing at least of uh stepanov um but you know who knows if there if four people were participating in that i'm sure they all got a couple stabs in um uh, you know if they took the ritual that seriously seriously enough to kill somebody that they better have yeah but you know they do, as we know, get A's for effort. So I guess they're all. I, think. I guess they're all external adepts now. Or uh, yeah, congratulations <laughs> to them. Yeah, bunch of winners. Uh, they are probably not going to have a good time in Russian prison. Um, those people don't have a good time in prison. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever read about uh, Black Dolphin. No, it's, a, it's nope. the Russian prison where they keep like Russia's like serial killers and like crazy political prisoners. It's like somewhere deep in Siberia, and it's like Russia's highest security, like insane prison. Like reading about the regimens there is bananas, and it really like it makes like American supermaxes look like you know a walk in the park. Well, that's <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that is that is not a good prison. Nope. Well, if these two 
uh, murders in Russia had kind of ambiguous connections to the O9A and its affiliates. Um, this other double murder that happened in the UK has some more clear connections to the Temple of Blood. Although an indirect one, but very clear. Still, yeah, it's, it's rather indirect, but mm. still, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're talking here about a double homicide that occurred last summer, uh, in June of 2020, in London. And that was the brutal stabbing deaths of two sisters, Biba Henry and Nicole Smallman, who, uh, you know, it's, it's a really kind of horrible story. I mean, all these yeah. are horrible stories, but I mean, the two sisters had been celebrating Biba's birthday, presumably in a, you know, COVID safe environment out in the park. Um, after their friends had left, the two sisters stayed along for a little bit longer and then were brutally stabbed to death at random by this guy, Daniel Hussein. Uh, it's, you know, it's a bad story. Uh, the, the, the bodies were discovered by Nicole Smallman's boyfriend later. Uh. You know, it's, it's horrible shit. Uh, but the killer, you know, in the, in the initial reporting, when they, when they finally caught him, um, had revealed that, you know, he had been into Satanism and the occult. Uh, even as like a high schooler, he had been referred to like some counter extremism program because, you know, he was looking up insane shit on school computers. Mm. Um, and it, turns out that he had been into this idea uh we'll see where this idea comes from but that he could attain wealth goods uh and power in this case he uh i guess was kind of an incel and wanted to do things for you know spells for the girls at school to like him or whatever but that he would also sacrifice six women every six months um in order to win the lottery yeah. uh, and become a millionaire, this did not work for him. Uh, you know, apparently he had bought several uh, lotto tickets that he signed in blood uh, after the murders and, you know, he didn't win. So, uh, well, so much for that. But of course, you know, the police found all these books of spells and lots of squiggly sigils and mm -hmm. kind of thing that we've seen. And a contract, again. Yeah. and a contract, and all yeah, I mean, stuff. he he believed that he was making a deal with a specific demon. Yes, and was and also was following instructions how to do it. Right, and so um, this the instructions that he was following uh, was revealed by BBC reporter Daniel De Simone uh, to be f by this strange fellow named E. A. Kerting. Uh, is that how we decided we were going to pronounce I think, it? Uh, I ran it through the old how do you say device, and it said to say coating. Coating. Okay. Yeah. That's what the internet's told me. Well, this, this guy, Ian Not Coating, his real name anyway, but... Yeah, his real name yeah. is Matthew Lawrence. Uh, he's from Utah, uh, apparently was raised in a Mormon family, as uh, is you know, it's often the case in Utah, I guess. Um, but coating is kind of known, cutting, cutting, whatever, uh, coating is kind of known even in left-hand path circles to be a kind of scam artist. Uh, he runs, uh, he sells like seminars and videos and books on like how to get things from demons with very specific instructions, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, you make a pact with this, whatever it is, loose, loose, a or something. And, you know, you leave, you sign it in blood and, you know, you leave space for the demon to reveal his signature to you and all this other bullshit. Uh, but what's interesting about coding, of course, is not that he's just like a Satanist scam artist. He is definitely that, but that he is directly linked to the Temple of Blood. Uh, namely, he had written uh, a number of works, uh, including on how to become a sanguinary vampire, uh, with detailed, of course, step-by-step -step instructions on, you know, how to, like, exsanguinate bodies and uh lots of you know typical kind of murder fantasy shit that we've seen yeah in T T temple of blood it's what they do yeah um, they're really into being vampires and so uh he published mostly under i guess the name archel archelius baron uh when he wrote for tob and i read also somewhere now fritz uh you're a, you're a tob guy uh <laughs> that's me you're one of our TOB specialists here. I love the at, Temple at of the Blood. Uh, love them. 
apparently he wrote under Drill Sergeant 666. Oh. Huh. And Drill Sergeant 666 is um, exactly what it sounds like. It's a cr- but it's, you know, usually represented as this well, he's crude a gr- drawing of an alien uh, kind of gray with a you know, Marine well, Corps. But, but I think that's an homage to him because I think his his official name is Drill Sergeant Gray, right? Yeah. But he has six 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 on his uh, hat, I believe. Right. So, so I, I guess think it's, uh, yeah. That yeah, that's the entity they worship, which is Drill Sergeant Gray, and I guess the pseudonym that this guy uses is Drill Sergeant six six six. So I guess the two different one things. of the pseudonyms. Um, yeah. Yeah. The other is this Ar- Archelius Baron or whatever. So he published in False Prophet. <laughs> yeah. And he maybe published- maybe his writings were even included in one of the Temple of Blood books. Maybe that that's yeah, yeah. that's what it seems like. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it seems that he you know later kind of disavowed Temple of Blood, mm-hmm. but probably didn't really. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we also see this all the time with O nine A people. Is this kind of uh, yeah? They lie a lot. Yeah. They lie a lot. That's that is what they do best. Um, and and disown each other often. Yeah. Uh, but some still think that he, you know, he maintained a, a strong connection uh, to Temple of Blood, and maybe was even sending the money. Uh, because I guess his scam does have people that uh, follow it. Uh, he, uh, you know, the direct connection to the the killer Daniel Hussein is that he posted. I mean, he watched all this shit, and he posted actively on uh, Coding's blog called "The Living God," um, and seem to be kind of coding's number one fanboy for for some time uh, and uh, the killer was also into nazi stuff and believed to be aryan although he's not white i think yeah, yeah. although we've seen also with the the onna's concept yeah. of aryan is not necessarily tied to whiteness in the same yeah, way yeah it's more yeah. about warrior cultures uh, and nobility and shit yeah warrior yeah. cultures and nobility and you know well some of them believe that Aryans go all the way to um, Cambodia, like Chloe Ortega. Says Some of them believe it goes all the way Aryan to the star system have, serious. Because they uh, adhere to the caste system and whatever. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, in this particular case, you know, being white doesn't necessarily really matter for being a Nazi Satanist, which is, you know, nice that they're inclusive. Or, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I bet it be- it matters to Sutter and Elton often, but okay. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, taking it a little bit further, I mean, I think that uh, most of this was overlooked in in all the initial reporting about this. You know, there's a lot of Satanism stuff. And really, you have to kind of know what to look for to be able to make those connections, right? And mm-hmm. and Daniel DeSimone obviously was able to do that, uh, where a lot of journalists missed that completely. Um, so, I mean, this is pretty pretty big on the list of, you know, recent murders that are connected in some way or another to an own INA affiliate. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, grim so, stuff. B- so yeah, we had one confirmed FBI snitch and two double murders, one in Russia and one in the UK so far. Yeah. And also some Atomwaffen people getting out of prison. So lovely. It's, it's not all yeah. bad news though, right? Mm-hmm. Like our, our boy Nicola seems to be doing pretty well. Yeah, he's yeah. doing exceptionally well. Uh, yeah, Nikola Pollux seems to be now stuck with being an Orthodox priest. <laughs> His inside role uh, will maybe become permanent because he was <laughs> outed as a Satanist and now has to pretend that he actually converted to... Hey, man, it's a yeah, job's a job. It's not, yeah. you know... That's yeah. right. An it's inside role is an inside role. It's not easy role, out there know? for, yeah. for like, a Nazi Satanist, you know, to get just get a job anywhere, you know? If, yeah. If you're going to play the role, I guess, why not? He's getting paid for it, probably. If, so. if he was based in the U.S., he could just work for the FBI, but it's harder out in the Balkans, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he wishes he could get that kind of fucking Absolutely, money. Absolutely, yeah. He has, to, he has to get it from the fucking Montenegrin Orthodox Church with its... Well, I mean, I guess they did get some funding from the state as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Another I, state connection. I guess maybe we should briefly <laughs> yeah. explain who Nikola Polixic is, but... Yeah, if you're new to the show and listening to this episode and are kind of confused, uh, don't worry, <laughs> we've covered it uh, pretty extensively. Uh, yeah. You can you can see um, there's episode a medium article, thirty two and thirty three, episode thirty two and thirty three, and this medium article yes. um, called yeah. Nazi Satanists uh, infiltrating the church and state in Montenegro. 
good yeah. clickbaity title, but it's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, uh, Nico uh, hasn't gone anywhere, uh, anywhere other than up, I guess. Um, we're talking about him now because he is still doing very, very public things, even more so than before, I'd say. So, you know, of course, Nikola Poliksic and his wife, Mirna Nikčević are uh, longtime O9A people. Uh, Nikola is basically, I think, the core of the Astral Bonars Lodge, mm. which is a long-standing uh, O9A Nexian based in Montenegro. Um, he was also responsible for uh, his hit band Dark Imperium, uh, which is very was and is very popular among O9A people even to this day. Uh, you know they produced riveting hits like Agios, Baphomet, and other such O9A chants. Yeah, that's um, my school song. We had a listener that uh, suggested um, doing remixes of them by and putting like air horns and like, damn son, where'd you find this? <laughs> and this? Which I still think is a hilarious idea. And thank you for uh, putting that out there. We might just have to do it sometime just to piss them off. Uh, but, you know, what's interesting about these two, of course, is that they've kind of ascended the ranks in their insight roles to a pretty far extent. Uh, Nicola is a deacon soon to be priest in the Montenegro Orthodox Church, uh, a title he was able to attain quite quickly. Uh, by our estimates, I guess within the last year, uh, but even less than that, I think it's been like, what, eight or nine months uh, since he started publicly, since he was like a subdeacon or whatever, and now yeah. he's full-fledged. His wife, Mirna Nikčević, is a former Montenegrin diplomat who got into trouble for saying... Um, some controversial things about the Serbian Orthodox Church. Yeah, controversial, she, right? Like they should all be killed. Yeah, right. they should all be. We should burn. We should you know, herd herd them all into that temple in Podgorica and burn them alive. Yeah, people had mixed uh, feelings about that. One. Yeah, people yeah. had mixed feelings about that. Although some Montenegrin nationalists were, you know, quite happy to embrace her. So she is kind of um, the civil society face of the O9A for Montenegro nationalism. She runs an NGO called Montenegro International, which uh, advocates for, you know, uh, Western uh, liberal human rights and, you know, NATO and EU integration and the like, but is, you know, her day job uh, when she's not, you know, making, getting custom cigarette cases with the sigil of index and, mm -hmm. uh, and reading and, false know, prophet which, and reading false prophet. Which there is adding, a photo of her reading it. Yeah. Yes. Reading temple of bloods, notorious text, false prophet. Um, so the two of them in recent years, which in, well, in the last year have moved to the Montenegro nationalist stronghold of Cetinje, uh, the old Royal capital of Montenegro, uh, which is kind of the home base for this Montenegro Orthodox Church, and generally, uh, more broadly, the Montenegrin nationalist movement. However, it's also the seat of the Serbian Orthodox Church's bishop in Montenegro. Now, we just a real brief summary of what happened with the Serbian Orthodox Church in Montenegro recently. In the last couple years, there's been some political issues around the former, well, the, basically the, the Montenegrin government trying to push the, the Montenegrin Orthodox Church into a, an official position of some kind and um, sidelining the influence of the Serbian Orthodox Church, which is in kind of, in some ways, rightly seen as an arm of the Serbian state uh, interfering in the affairs of independent Montenegro, but nevertheless, it is the single largest church in Montenegro. Uh, and also the only like, Orthodox, official one, yeah. Yeah, the only official one and one that most Orthodox worshippers go to uh, in Montenegro. Now, their bishop, who was a kind of hardline nationalist, Serbian nationalist, uh, died last year of COVID, um, and he is being replaced by this new bishop, uh, What's his name? Yoannikie. Yoannikie. Yeah. They all have a funny, like, Star Wars-sounding Greek <laughs> names. Uh, so Yoannikie II was set to be enthroned at this monastery in Cetinje, which is the traditional seat of the bishop there. Uh, this became a major issue between Montenegro nationalists and the Montenegro Orthodox Church, and 
Serbian nationalists in Montenegro and the Serbian Orthodox Church. Yeah, the now, thing is that the, the so the official uh, seat of the Serbian Church in Montenegro is Cetinje, but Cetinje is also the like kind of the capital of the Montenegro nationalist movement, and the whole town is basically on that side politically. So they hate kind of the the influence of the Serbian Church there. So this is why it was very controversial because they wanted to have this ceremony um, to you know enthrone their new archbishop in a city that doesn't welcome him. Right. Yeah. They made that very clear with like roadblocks and no. well, things yeah, on so fire. On the fifth of September, Sunday, fifth of September, uh was when this enthronement was due to happen. Montenegrin nationalists and the Montenegrin Orthodox Church announced that they would protest the enthronement. Uh they organized quite well. Um protesters um from all over Montenegro, so Montenegro nationalist supporters to come to Tetinje to prevent uh, the enthr- enthronement of the bishop. Uh, and it it got hot, I gotta say. Uh, they set up roadblocks all over the, uh, around the city, basically cut off the city from the rest of Montenegro. Uh, you know, roadblocks of tires that they then set on fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the enthronement happened anyway, but in a pretty spectacular way. So the bishop was helicoptered in uh, with surrounded by special forces, and they conducted the ceremony in in you know the Setinje monastery, and then left. Uh, and, and you know, there's some really spectacular photographs of of the whole thing: burning barricades. Um, you know, when he was taken out of the helicopter, the special forces had that like anti sniper cover uh, that they were you know chasing him with, and it kind of you know works on both sides, right? It, uh, f- so for Serbs, it shows. You know these they're they want to terrorize our church and you know um prevent this enthronement from happening, which has you know been happening for hundreds of years now in the same place, and blah 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 they're you know trying to take our rights away and on the Montenegro nationalist side, it's aha, you see you know this new government that's a coalition of Serbian parties with this kind of green left party as well are actually, you know, agents of the Serbian state and they're using our resources, like our special forces, our cops, our helicopters to, you know, protect this intruder invader or whatever. Um, It should be mentioned that that Bishop is also a native of Montenegro as well. Uh, <laughs> and from, I think, Nikšić, I think, which ah. is where uh, uh, Mirna is from, and also the president of Montenegro. Maybe their um, families are friends. Yeah, I mean, well, in a way, yeah. this this conflict can also be seen as a conflict between different factions of the Montenegrin state. Because, yeah. as you said now, the government consists out of these pro-Serbian parties, plus some like left liberal parties uh, in a coalition with them. And but the president is still from the well his own camp, but which through uh, decades while he was in power defined itself as a like a Montenegro nationalist uh, um, politically. So for example, beforehand he had been a Serbian nationalist. Yes, though, in the nineties, the early nineties, yeah, early nineties. And, yeah. and so for example, his former chief of the police, who is now his advisor was the uh, a person who organized and coordinated the Montenegro national pro- pro- protest now like and yeah. he, he was also a former head of like special forces police um so uh yeah and there was a like a, a Serbian national the same guy that was uh, involved with pogroms of muslims in Pljevlja in the 90s as well I I don't know uh, I'll have no to idea. check up on that there's yeah. one of these guys was okay and, which is kind of ironic but yeah no idea so there was a, a Serbian nationalist protest uh, now, which happened in the capital city Podgorica. There was like around three thousand people there, and there was this Montenegrin nationalist protest that happened in Cetinje, also a second capital of Montenegro, which there was also roughly around three thousand people there. So I mean, okay, Montenegro has six hundred thousand people, so you know this is not a small amount of people for that country, but together it's about 6,000 people who actively participated in this conflict. So, you know, 99% of people in Montenegro, I think, are kind of sick of these things and are not really actively participating in them. So that's also, I think, important to mention. Yeah, but it's also important to mention that this is how these kind of nationalist groups work in in that, like, you know, they strive to kind of force the hand of people, right? To force people to identify a specific way through these kind of 
accelerationist acts, like through these big spectacles, right? Yes. So on the one hand, you have the burning barricades. On the other hand, you know, you have thousands of people coming out to support in Podgorica, which was also a big spectacle too. They had like um, rappers and shit performing uh, from Serbia and like, you know, we're burning road flares and, you know, it's kind of big festival atmosphere. So, I mean, the go- ultimate goal of, you know, nationalist groups like this is to force people who don't want to identify one way or the other as, you know, to choose sides. Yeah. And they do that by, you know, constantly creating tension and forcing the issue over and over and over again. Because if you look at it, I mean, the Montenegrin Orthodox Church is, you know, very small and it's not recognized by anyone. And yet, you know, this has been the most contentious issue in the region now in the last couple of years, right? I mean, and and there's a lot of, after this happened, I mean, there's, not even a, a cottage industry, but a straight up industry of, you know, Balkan commentators uh, on the news and internet that, you know, all offered their various opinions on this, most of which is kind of horseshit and misses the point. Uh, but, you know, people are talking about it and that's that's what they care about, right? Um, yeah, I think the Montenegrin Orthodox Church only has like two bishops, the, the main one, the archbishop, and then there was this bishop from Nikšić, who is Mirna's and Nikola's close friend. Bishop yeah, we'll Boris. get into him in a in a minute. Yeah. yeah, and a few priests. So only a handful of priests. They so, have, I guess, two bishops in the diaspora too. They have one okay. in Argentina, I think, and one in the U.S. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Uh, so in Montenegro, but they only have a few priests, and so Nicola is now one of them. And because in Orthodox countries, you know, a national Orthodox Church is a big part of nationalism. Basically, Nicola, by becoming a deacon in the church, really is now very much in the heart of the like nationalist leadership of the Montenegro nationalist movement, I would say. Absolutely, yeah. And you can see him in the photos now, because this is now, this conflict was in the media, and he's there, right? Uh, right, right in the, in the, the, the and, center and, of everything. And gloating about it. So, I mean, yeah. um, previously, when there had been protests against this, we had published photos that were in, you know, mainstream Balkan media, where you can see this Nazi Satanist, <laughs> behind the archbishop mm-hmm. um in the most recent protests uh al jazeera balkans published a photo of him uh you know running through these empty streets right um yes which which he then gloated about on social media about you know how great it was and his only problem is that maybe they uh maybe people would mistake him as a as a serbian priest who's fleeing like the courageous yeah. montenegrin protesters or whatever and but uh-huh. for the for the most part the media is completely ignoring this uh, story that we broke that he's a nazi satanist who infiltrated the montenegro orthodox church like this is pretty much being ignored that that's and, what he is and so we know for a fact now that bishop boris um has been informed of this and had you know has had conversations yeah. about this uh which he and i guess you can see this in some of the Montenegrin nationalist responses to this in the media is that, well, okay, we know he had a troubled past or whatever, but now he's found the right way, which, you know, if you know anything about the O9A or even bothered to read anything about the O9A, you'd be far more concerned because, you know, this isn't like, oh, you know, when he was a kid, he listened to Slayer and like, you know, got a pentagram tattoo or whatever. It was like a metalhead. Uh, it's no, he's like an influential person in a neo-Nazi Satanist terrorist group, basically. Uh, and also, and, and has um, occupied, you know, a respected position in that group for quite a long time and is active in it to this day and was openly active yes. more or less until we outed him. Right. So, I mean, like, you know, this year he did the interview with Jake Hanrahan. He, he had. In April. Yeah. In April yeah, of this in April. year. He, in May, he was already, ser- like, you know, yeah. there were pictures of him serving the Easter liturgy or whatever. Yeah. And, I mean, you can find that audio interview where he speaks as, a, as one of the leaders of the Order of Nine Angles. Yeah. And even beyond that, like, um, something that we dedicated an episode earlier uh, is the, the interview with, um, with Nick Lowes, David Myatt and Nick Lowes in the 90s, was that interview was provided to Nameless Therein or whatever, the 09A musician, by the ABG Lodge. So, I mean, yes. So, uh, you know, it got me thinking about my namesake there, Bishop uh-huh. Boris, and, 
you know, one would expect, I mean, we certainly expected that having a Nazi Satanist in your church would look bad. (laughs) And that presumably one would not want to have a Nazi Satanist representing you in church. Yeah, you might say that's like literally the last thing you would want to have representing you in your church. Yeah, it it looks pretty bad. Yes. Uh, So why doesn't he care? Does he actually believe that he's a misguided youth and that like he had a misguided youth and now he's, you know, accepted Christ and and moved on? Or does he actually see him as a valuable pawn, right? In in this strategy of attaining, uh, you know, an independent Montenegrin church. And the reason why I think about that is that, you know, who is this guy? I mean, this is, you know, this is not as we mentioned many times before, the Montenegrin Orthodox Church is small and not recognized by any of the canonical churches. So, you know, where did this guy train to be a priest? You know, uh-huh. yeah. what what went on in this guy's life to, you know, as a fairly young man, become a bishop? And I think pretty much the leading force in the Montenegrin Orthodox Church right now, I have the kind of, I have the feeling that the archbishop, Mihailo or whatever, they just, they just card him out for events. I mean, he mm-hmm. looks very decrepit and mm-hmm. like fragile and old. Yeah, and the I think that basically, Bernie, yeah, to, it, it definitely seems that way. I would say that Bishop Boris seems to be the kind of main guy in the church right now. So where did he become a priest? He became a priest in Ukraine on the separatist Ukrainian Orthodox Church, uh-huh. which was recently... Uh, recognized by the uh, Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople and Alexandria, I think, as well. But it caused a split within different Orthodox churches. Mm -hmm. The Russian church will never recognize them, so the Serbian church is on their side. Other churches have taken the the Russian-slash-Serbian side, while others have recognized the Ukrainian Orthodox church. But the Ukrainian Orthodox church is interesting because it comes out of, basically, the Nazi diaspora. Mm -hmm. It's a it was, I think, three separate Orthodox churches. One was founded by an OUN organization of Ukrainian nationalists um, guy, and the other one was founded by the nephew of Simon Petlura, uh, who was one of the most important figures in Ukrainian nationalism and horrible anti Semite, who mm. the only thing he did uh, good in his life is get assassinated by Shlomo <laughs> Schwarzbald, who's a <laughs> Ukrainian anarchist who killed him in, in as a retaliation for Ukrainian nationalist pogroms against Jews. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, this is, you know, they, they, then they got joined together in 2018 as one church, and that's when they were recognized more or less by the. Um, ecumenical patriarch. But, you know, Bishop Boris is somebody who was presumably in Ukraine during Maidan. So, I mean, he became a monk in 2016 uh, and was studying at the seminary there. So, presumably, he was there during Maidan. And what's interesting, I mean, there was a a very Maidan-esque vibe to some of the pictures that came out of uh, Tsetinia on September 5th, right? These burning tires. Bishop Boris himself was photographed in in a gas mask mm-hmm. standing in like a cloud of uh, tear gas, right? Which is to me kind of reminiscent of Maidan in, mm. in some ways. And, you know, in an, in an interview I read with him, he very much sees the path of the Montenegrin Orthodox church to uh, autocephaly, that is to be like recognized by other churches as like a canonical church to go around, go about kind of the same way, as the Ukrainian church. And so that, you know, Mm. he said that, you know, Ukraine is an example that, you know, if you struggle hard, you know, you can, you can win basically. And one of the things that is interesting about Maidan and in general about the kind of Ukrainian nationalist movement is this, um, the presence of non-Christian or even anti-Christian elements within the Ukrainian nationalist movement. So during Maidan, you know, there were priests of the, Ukrainian Orthodox Church out there in the streets with people. But there were also, you know, Slavic neo-pagans, which is a very big thing in Ukraine. They even have um, kind of their own pagan version of the World Church of the Creator or something where, like, you know, they they worship being Ukrainian. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. And that's like, that is their god. But then there are also these, like, you know, Slavic neo-pagans, like all, all Nazis who, like, you know, even... I don't know, carted in a, a statue to one of the Slavic gods and put it in Maidan and stuff like that. Mm. So, you know, these guys were existing side by side with the Ukrainian Orthodox Church and collaborating in many ways. Like during mm-hmm. the war, you had, 
you know, everybody knows about the Azov Battalion and the like. But, you know, there's also the, there's, for example, the Misanthropic Division, which is even more like Nazi Nazi, like edgelord Nazi, metalheads, you know, uh, skinheads, combat at 18 types, who are like a very valuable asset on like the street fights you know, on the, uh, and in, in the war itself in Ukraine against the Russian separatists. So it leads me to speculate that, you know, maybe, yeah, he knows now that this guy's a Nazi Satanist kind of doesn't care. Cause why, why would he, you know, maybe this guy, if he can, you know, do stuff, then, you know, fuck it. Yeah. You know, maybe he can get, get some other people on his side, you know, because, you know, those are good fighters and, you know, those are guys you want on, on the barricades. Not not saying that Nikola is a particularly good fighter. He looks kind of oafish and, you know, whatever. But, you know, maybe he has this kind of grandiose idea of, well, you know, we can do a Maidan here and, you know, we're, we'll need people like that, you know, regardless of whether they're Nazi Satanists or not, because the primary interest is for this Montenegrin nationalist idea, yes. which could be articulated. Hmm through, you know, having Nazi Satanists on your side, just like in Ukraine, right? I mean, you know, there's some other parallels I noticed as well, right? I mean, I mean, this is just me, my stream of thought uh, right now, but I mean, like, Ukraine also saw this alliance between Nazis and liberals, kind of in the same way that you see mm. in this Montenegro nationalist movement. So mm-hmm. like in, in the reactions to um, this protest, you know, you saw lots of, you know, Serbs being like, well, you know, th- these guys are out there with, you know, pictures and flags of people that collaborated with the Nazis and stuff. And then the liberals would turn around and say, well, well but look, look, there's all these liberals here, you know, the human rights. These guys had like a Yugoslav flag. There were some anti-fascists being like, you see, they're communists there too. It's all good, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, you know, you had this in Ukraine as well. That was that paradox of Maidan because you had the whole like pro-EU, uh, you know, NATO faction of Maidan, and then you had the straight-up Nazis working, you know, and they worked hand-in-hand together to, you know, achieve a common goal. So, I mean, there's kind of a parallel there, too, and and I'm, I don't think it's necessarily something that should be overlooked when we think about why that church has done very little to even, well, comment on it in the first place, but, you know, sideline this individual. They're just going to continue to, you know, push out the idea that, like, well, well, you don't know what you're talking about. He's a good guy. He's a become a Christian uh, This now. was in his youth in April of this year. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. The follies of youth of like... <laughs> he was a mere 36. <laughs> Something, I don't know. He looks about that. How old is he? You know, I think he's 40. There now. you go. Okay. Uh, I a mean, young, he said he spent 20 a years... sprightly 40. <laughs> yeah. He spent 20 years doing this, which is the, the figure that he likes bringing up over and over again. Right. You know, being in the 09A, studying the occult, blah, 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 and, you know, what, just overnight he's yeah i mean and, and it's also it's, it's also funny because like he's not only a na- nazi satanist which is like completely obvious and, and proven he's also a nazi satanist from a group that the, their main thing is infiltrating mundane organizations <laughs> such yeah. as church churches that's like yeah. they're one of their main things that they do so okay yeah fine boris it's a good uh hypothesis i'd say mm. it's a uh, balls in vladika's court now what you got to say about that bishop <laughs> Where were you in 2014 yeah. in Ukraine? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's something to keep in mind because, like, it, it was kind of surprising to me that you know mm-hmm. that they, especially when we found out that he has directly been talked to about right. this and totally doesn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Uh, it it seems to me to indicate that well, maybe he learned a couple things in Ukraine. You know? Yeah. I mean, we could have our be we can have our own stupid. misanthropic division, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, and also he he's <sighs> not only you know uh, Nikola is not only tolerated there. It's quite obvious that uh, Bishop Boris, Nikola, and Mina are really good friends, like yeah. personal friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, they they keep pushing him harder and harder. Like, I mean, yeah. the images don't stop coming out of him. You know, yeah. of Nikola doing the rights and meeting yeah. with people and, and doing all that. So, I mean, clearly they think that he's valuable to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, you know, what that says about their church is a whole other thing. And we said over and over again, you know, the Serbian Orthodox Church is, is yes, full of, you know, chauvinists and war criminals <laughs> and, and, and everything else. But, you know, no. if your response to that is being like, well, maybe these guys are better. At, no. Take nah. a take a look at who you're fucking dealing with. Yeah, mm-hmm. like basically the most important guy in the church is totally fine 
with having a fucking O nine A guy yeah. as his right hand man, his like little yes. sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you know, I, I this we've said over and over is gonna be is gonna continue to develop, but you know, really the ABG Lodge connects all these other dots with some of the th- things that we talked about today, right? We talked about Sutter. Bollock yeah. was in direct communication with Sutter for years. You know, uh, yeah. we have, you know, they read Temple of Blood text, took pictures of themselves reading Temple of Blood text. Yeah. Um, with Nexians in Russia, ABG Lodge is another connection there. You know, they had yes. cooperation with, with the O9A in Russia as well. So, I mean, you know, they're really... Yes. Also, All over the place. also Temple of Blood connected the, the Russian connection. Yeah, really. Yeah. Well, yeah, today's episode. Yeah, I think I think Temple of Blood actually kind of connects connects it yeah, well. Definitely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the ABG Lodge being around for as long as it was mm. is obviously you know plays a role there as well. Yeah, yeah, yes, def- definitely. I mean, it was not. You know, just by accident, that he was the one who gave the interview to Jack Hanrahan as a yeah. as a o- O9A representative, and it's not accidental that he was the person running the Twitter uh, account, yeah. the official Twitter account. So I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he is the current outer representative or something like that. Um, I mean, I have yeah. no reason, like I have no proof of that, but. I wouldn't be surprised if he was. And they haven't like officially said so, but they also haven't officially said very much recently. No. The O nine A website is just Chloe going on yeah. insane rants. Uh, <laughs> yes, I mean, I think David <laughs> might. I think I think uh, like David might ha- had uh, to kind of come back and directly uh, comment on things because his like spawn is really fucking it up. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Nicola is now stuck with being a priest because he was outed uh, as a Satanist. Sutter was outed as an FBI informant. Chloe yeah. is just Chloe's writing just being Chloe. Chloe's Chloe. incoherent gibberish on the, yes. the, 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 on the official <laughs> website. So, yeah, I think... I he, mean, Matt's getting up there in years, and this is his legacy, right? It I mean, is. He's going to fuck it up for dad so bad yeah. that, like, he's yeah. ashamed of his children. In the <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, this is not the last we've seen of of no, unfortunately Nicola for sure. Uh, and you know, we'll continue to stay on top of that situation. And I, I am curious. I'm I'm very curious if anything's gonna you know happen with Bishop Boris. And, you know, if anyone gonna, at some point you know, is going to have to answer some questions publicly yeah. about that. If there are any Ukraine experts or Ukrainian people uh, among our listeners who can maybe help us shed some light on these Bishop Boris's connections there, that would be very helpful. Also, if there are any people out there with jobs who can help us uh, leave our jobs by signing up to our Patreon, That's, um, that would also be helpful. Yes, that would be extremely All right, nice, a nice plug there. For <laughs> working overtime there. <laughs> you got it. All right, yeah. well, well, well we that, that's a, somebody has to edit this episode, and it's going to be Fritz. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> if we want this to come out in a timely manner, uh, I think we're going to have to call it a day here. Well, hopefully we, we won't have to talk about these people in at least a few weeks now. I hope so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, this was kind of a lot at once. Uh, yeah, this was originally designed to be one episode, by the way, with the, the Sutter episode that we did yeah. last time. Um, but I don't think we really realized how much news, how, how much we'd missed in our in our absence from the O nine A Labyrinthus Mythologicus. But this isn't, and we didn't even spend uh, much time on the atom and stuff that's yeah. going on. Yeah, so, there's some there's some new shit going on with that too. Yeah, but yeah, hopefully we'll continue now with our usual arc and briefly yeah. go back. To the 30s on for a film Be- episode before is, Nazis were Satanists. Yes, yes, um, the good old days <laughs> when they just thought that they were you know secret Israelis <laughs> yeah, yes. sent from space or something. Yeah, <laughs> when they were using the pyramid inch to measure the apocalypse. <laughs> Those guys, <laughs> yeah, the normal Nazis. So the next episode is the the, the film episode. Uh-huh. We're good. actually briefly going back to the um, the 30s. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you might have then, to make a brief trip when we do Christian Identity too, but overall, yeah. we're, and we'll, yeah, we're speeding we'll, out. Then we'll continue with the art, mostly post-Second World War stuff. Until the 80s, basically. We'll see exactly where we'll stop. Yeah, I think somewhere 
around the 80s. Yeah, uh, yeah. When they start listening to Screwdriver instead of uh, Hate yeah, and Annie or whatever. That's when we're checking out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. leave with uh, Rahoa and... Actually, we should do an episode um, making fun of uh, Rock Against Communism. I've been making, like, I've been wanting to do that for a long time. It's one of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. uh, back in the day, uh, we all have a mutual friend that we used to sit around and listen to Nazi bands and read their lyrics out loud. Uh, and it is the stupidest shit you've ever heard. Like, yeah. I mean, because especially like the Oi bands, like it's, you know, there's not... A hell of a lot of lyricism and oi music anyway so it's not like you know very deep and so it's just pure stupidity i mean <laughs> rahoa takes it a little bit into like kind of uh i don't know <laughs> ballads white power ballads but uh <laughs> it's even more corny because they're just like cornball ass canadian people so they're, <laughs> they're like thompson of canada they are yeah they're absolutely the thompson of canada <laughs> yeah totally you are playing with fire, bringing you Stasha back into the show. <laughs> oh, they'll be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll be back in the next arc for yeah, sure. Yeah, true. Fun. Yeah, true. All right, well, I guess before we get too far, before we get into Rohoa territory, <laughs> we've got a lot of a lot of Nazi granddads to wrap up. So uh, I guess yep. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see our, our patrons, our listeners that care about us <laughs> and our well-being and our sanity. Our good listeners. We'll, we'll continue with them pretty soon. And the rest of you cheapskates, see you in a week. Yeah. Bye. Bye. here from the empire never ended this has been one of our weekly free episodes for free people but for premium people we also have weekly premium episodes which you can get at patreon.com slash tenepod t-e-n-e-p-o-d and also follow our various social media things in the in the show description there like and subscribe them follow them like and sub follow and subscribe follow them do it